JBN, we keep you informed. Illegal gun seized on Pandora Crescent. An illegal gun and five rounds of ammunition were seized during an operation on Pandora Crescent, Kingston 11 on Saturday. Reports from the Onspey police are that about 7.50 a.m., lawmen were in the area when a premises was searched and one Colt .45 pistol with a magazine containing 5.45 rounds of ammunition was seized. No arrest was made in relation to this seizure. Garbage truck driver surrenders to police four days after Clan Carty crash. The driver of the garbage truck, which overturned, killing a seven-year-old Clan Carty primary school boy last Monday, has surrendered to the police. The police say he turned himself in on Friday evening, four days after he fled the scene of the accident. According to the police, his identity has been withheld pending further investigations. Benjamin Bear died after the truck, which was had to school to collect garbage, moved off without the driver in the vehicle, slammed into a park taxi and then overturned, crushing him. The incident has left the school family saddened. The government has since announced that it will be instituting new policies for the collection of garbage on school compounds. Senior Superintendent Terence Spent, U.S. visa cancelled. Another casualty of the United States stripping prominent Jamaicans of visitors' visas is Senior Superintendent of Police Terence Bent. The United States Embassy in Kingston cancelled visas issued to Cabinet Minister Darrell Vaz, Opposition Member of Parliament Philip Paulwell, senior police personnel and businessmen, according to sources close to the embassy. Bent could not be reached for a comment, but an impeccable source confirmed that the feared crime fighter was also affected. Bent was the last head of the now-defunct Mobile Reserve Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, the disbandment of which was supported by the United States. Vaz said on Friday that he would reapply for a visitor's visa to the U.S., but it is not certain if others affected will do likewise. Massage Parl shot up in St. Andrew. The St. Andrew Central Police were called to a premises on Dumbarton Avenue in the parish on Saturday night in relation to a case of shooting with intent. Reports are that about 11 p.m., a car with two men aboard was driven onto the compound of a business place that is operated as a massage parlor and alighted with guns in hand. A guard who was at the gate of the premises reported that on the approach of the men, he ran into the building. The men reportedly fired several shots, causing customers on the premises to run for cover. At the end of the shooting, no one was injured. Several spent shells and bullet fragments were seen in and outside of the premises as the police probed the incident. Man lucky to be alive after being shot by robbers in St. James. A man is lucky to be alive after he was shot and injured by gunmen while he ran from them in Unity Hall, St. James, on Wednesday night. The injured man, said to be a 28-year-old resident of Unity Hall, was hospitalized as a result of his injuries. Police reports are that about 8.30 p.m., the man arrived at his home and was in the process of opening the grill when he was pounced upon by two armed men. He was then forced inside the house by the gunmen who demanded money. The man, however, suddenly ran from the house and was shot several times by the hoodlums. The wounded man managed to escape to another section of the community where residents assisted him to the hospital. The police are probing the incident. Elderly woman dies in Portmore House fire. A senior citizen died in a fire at her home in Barber Village, Portmore in St. Catherine on Saturday. The deceased woman has been identified as 65-year-old domestic helper Catherine Markland. The Portmore police reported that about 2.48 p.m., residents heard cries for help in the community and saw smoke coming from Markland's house. The police and the fire department were alerted, and on the arrival, the house was seen engulfed in flames. During cooling down operations, the charred remains of the elderly woman was found. Markland's death followed close on the heels of the death of two boys in another house fire in Norwood St. James on Friday night, after being reportedly left alone among other young siblings. Cops kill fewest citizens in decade. Jamaica is on track to record its lowest number of police fatal shootings since the Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom came into effect just under a decade ago. With fewer than 60 days left before the end of the year, Indicom is reporting that 72 civilians have been killed by members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, since January 1. 
This is 65 persons, fewer than those killed by the security forces in 2018, and more than 285 persons fewer than the number of citizens killed in 2010. The same year, the security forces conducted an operation in West Kingston that resulted in the deaths of more than 70 people as they sought to execute an extradition warrant on drug lord Christopher Dodo Skog. 357 deaths were recorded at the hands of the police that year, before the number took a nose dive to 210 in 2011. That was the year Indicom became fully operational. Indicom head Terence Williams said the reduction represents a shift from controversial early morning operations within the JCF and also the pressure over the years on that state body to bolster accountability, respect for life, and a professionalism among its members. Far too often, as regards a public body, Indicom has been the only body talking about police accountability. And if you look at it, Indicom was supposed to be part of a broad reform, but what we had is Indicom alone pushing reform, said Williams. In our youth, we would have heard various ministers of national security saying things like, no angels died at Green Bay. Now we have accepted that the police force must put aside hard policing, which is really a euphemism for violence. He added, I think powerful people now recognize that murder cannot be a tool of policing. The fact that everyone appreciates that, I think is a greater thing for the 10 years. We want to see it accepted inside the force. Williams was addressing a press conference last week where he continued to chide the police force and its members for a lack of cooperation with Indicom investigations and recommendations. Williams accused the police of using delayed tactics and avoiding identification parades as a means of frustrating investigators and witnesses who over time lost interest in the cases. Since the start of the year, Indicom said it received 236 categories of complaints in 201 incidents for the April to June period, and that most of the cases were for assault, 85, discharge of firearm, 60, shooting, injury, 23, and a fatal shooting. There were also five deaths in custody. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded the most complaints for the period at 65. St. Catherine followed with 35, while St. James and Westmoreland recorded 24 and 15 complaints, respectively. At the same time, Williams came under pressure last week from members of the police federation who lambasted his suggestions that cops suspected of being unfit for duty should be pulled from frontline duty. We, as members of the public, want to ensure that the officers who are treating with us on a daily basis or officers who are not under investigation for serious offenses are not charged and that officers who the police give firearms to are officers whose credibility, demeanor and conduct are one where they should be so entrusted, said Williams. Be careful what message we send to children, Army Chief warns. Lieutenant General Rocky Meade, Chief of Defense Staff for the Jamaica Defense Force, has a message for parents. Addressing the recent 290th anniversary banquet for the Woolmers Trust Group of Schools at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, Meade warned parents to be careful of the subliminal messages they send when they use contacts to assist your children in clearing life's hurdles. When we want to get our kids into our beloved alma mater when they don't make it, when we have contacts and we make a call and get them in, what are we telling them, said Meade, who is a past student of Woolmers Boys School. The Army Chief was guest speaker during the October 26th ceremony that saw the induction of Patrick Patroso, Alma Makien, Lassell's Chin, Dr. Lucille Mayer, and Professor Uwenta into the group of schools Hall of Fame. Meade was adamant that schools in the island must spend more time on the development of the total human being than just trying to produce academics or athletes. Are we trying to create academics or sprinters? Or are we trying to create good citizens of Jamaica, he asked. Also speaking at the gala was current principal of Woolmer's Boys School, Dwight Pennycook, who lauded the institution's staff and supporters, who he said were integral in keeping the group of schools, including Woolmer's Girls and Woolmer's Proprietary, at the forefront of education in Jamaica. We continue to be among the top-rated schools in the island, and we will ensure that there will be no change in that status, thanks to the support from the alumni who have been integral in keeping the schools afloat, he said. Woolmers has been supported by a number of past students' groups that have undertaken several initiatives, including the grassing of the boys' schools 
football field, the adoption of its science lab and a massive information technology initiative. Woolmers holds the distinction of being the oldest school in the English-speaking Caribbean and has produced some of the country's brightest minds and highest achievers in almost every endeavor. Earlier this year, Governor General Sir Patrick Allen declared May 21 as Woolmers Day. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.